Good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Once again, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you all in this platform, Lit Impact. The interest and the purpose of the platform is that we may educate one another, that we may learn and understand how things work and what we ought to do. Listen, we need to understand that um, in order for one to have a choice in whatever situation that you find yourself in, you must have options. So the reason why we have this platform it is for us to get informed so that we can have options on what to do with our bodies and life in general. Um, before we start, I would want us to have a word of prayer. Brother Paul, if you are there, may you please pray for us. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, blessings and honor to your holy living name. We thank you, Lord Father, for this opportunity that you've granted us to come today and to be equipped with knowledge of what is right and what is wrong, especially in these days that we live in. We pray, our God, for this session that your blessings may be upon it, that you speak to every one of our hearts, O oh Lord Father. Help us, our God, to grow spiritually, physically, and mentally in ways that pleases you be with the speakers may be you who brings to remind to remind us of all that has been um that have been learned over or researched in jesus name we pray amen. amen amen thank you very much once again i greet you all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ my name is because singwenya i'm currently based in bumalang um i'm excited but this topic, it's something that I find very interesting, especially for me because I am a father of three young ladies. One thing that was interesting, interesting is that my first daughter, was she's actually 16 this year. When she first went to her menstrual cycle, the first person that she told that she's now a sister is was myself. And that actually got me thinking, what is the next step now? you know as they are growing if you develop a proper communication you'll always have that kind of uh, situation but as a father i get to step up and learn more so I can, whatever i have to advise and counsel my daughter i'll be able to do that intelligently and that actually led me even studying these things um about the contraceptives and many other things that are women related and i want to encourage every male um, and also ladies that have brothers and husbands to encourage them to study these things they are very much needful because we realize that there are many things that we do not know which we ought to know so that at least we can advise and assist those that may need our assistance in order to live a better and healthy life so the interest of the platform is that we may have a better health life and that we may improve um, our lifespan in this Dnh, or at least even if we don't live longer we live a healthy life we do not have to live in pain and be in constant uh, medication so today we are discussing birth control contraceptives pills which i think most of us are familiar with and i think for me the little um heal for many females because it actually gave them the opportunity to pursue their careers to uh, reach to their dreams without having to worry about getting pregnant pregnant and have to stay at home and attend children and it also gave them um, financial freedom in a way but what we want to know is that is this is is, is that all that the pill has if there are other things that we may find in the pill, what are, what, are, what are those things and how do they impact our lives? What is it that we may need to do um, if there be any changes that needs to be done? And one thing that I can say to you is that the purpose of education is that you may have a choice. It is not to tell you what to do with your, with your life. It is not to tell you what to do with your body. It is not to tell you what to do with your dream, but it's, it is to inform you what is there so that at the end of the day you can make an informed decision about your life because at the end of the day this is your life and whoever the person that is going to suffer the consequences for whatever happens in the body is yourself that is why our duty is to just inform you so that whatever decision that you take 
it is indeed an informed decision. So a question that maybe need to, may, we may need to ask is that, how far are we from truth? And how far are we from error? How close are we to right things, falsehood and all that? That's a question that I may not be able to answer for you, but based on the information that you get, you can then measure yourself, the distance between you and the truth. Thereafter, you may then know what to do. And I want to say this once again, just these few rules, which I think are very important. If you have a question, there will be a, um, uh, a moment of question and answer sessions just towards the end. And also, if you check, there's a space there which says income calls. You can actually type your question or your comment down there. It's important that we ask as many questions because that's how we learn. Ask many questions. There is no foolish or useless question. Every question is valuable. The only foolish question is the one that, which is not asked. Having said that, I do not need to introduce our speaker. He's actually a resident in this platform, Dr. Komuto <coughs> Mugabe. I will give that opportunity to her to actually introduce herself, maybe to tell us what she is doing currently and where, so that if one would want to touch with her you will know where to get her yeah she'll be uh, our speaker today may i ask her to unmute herself and also to mute her video over to you uh, thank you so much my friend um good evening everybody so unlike other times this time i had uh, prepared to unmute as well as uh, show a video uh, except when I got to the boardroom, it seems they've seen me using it, so they've locked it up. So I'm literally sitting outside in the dark. <laughs> um, so pardon me for not being able to show my face, but it is well. It is well. Uh, uh, I'm Dr. Komoto uh, I have to say that because I'm going to be talking. I'm not trying to be controversial in anything I say. I think. Uh, about a month ago, um, I said enough is enough um, with what I was seeing in my practice, with women coming in. Look, I don't have the necessary stats for my women, but it just seemed like every woman is having hormonal imbalances. And when they come in, that's not what they're expressing. They've got many other conditions that they're saying, but I'm listening to them and I'm realizing that the foundation is wrong. Uh, so I think I I posted about it and uh, Brother Bukwesi was uh, also in that light. So he jumped on it on that opportunity um, to say, let's talk about this. So I'm Dr. Mahapi. I have 17 years experience in the field of medicine and a great, uh, bulk of that time was spent in women's health. Uh, I worked in labor ward, I worked in the uh, Ops and Gaini. Um, I even ran a women's wellness center for five years where I exclusively, well, minus the 20 men I saw, I exclusively um, saw women um, because I realized the importance of women's health, uh, physical and mental health. Uh, currently, I work in a practice, in a GP practice in four ways. Um, I know some of you have been trying to get hold of me between 8 and 6 p.m. I am back to back. So if you can't send a WhatsApp, it's near impossible for you to get hold of me. Um, so I do recommend you send a WhatsApp and then I will find time to respond to it. So I work in a GP practice and this is where I've been seeing women who really pushed me to talk about this this topic um so i will not go into the history of the birth control pill and what the intention was meant to be i'm going to start just simply by explaining to all of us the beauty and i don't think that word is ever used of um, a woman's uh, menstrual cycle um, it's it's like that of the moon. Uh, 
you know, uh, anyone who's looked outside in the evening will see that the moon works in four phases. Every seven days, um, it, it starts and it's a new moon. You can't see much after seven days. It's a quarter, then it's a full moon, then it's a quarter, and then you can't see much. And that's what the woman's cycle is like. Um, every seven days, um, there's a change um, in the menstrual, in the reproductive, in the system, okay, in the cycle. So that means that naturally a woman's cycle is meant to be about 28 days. So if you're a woman, if you're a man who knows women, this is one of the first things. Is your cycle regular and about 28 days? Um, and during that time, your cycle, a lot is happening um, in your body. So day zero, the beginning, or day one, is actually when the period starts. Um, and at that time, what is happening is that your hormones, okay, so your, the menstrual cycle is governed by hormones. There are five hormones that are involved. We mostly talk about four, but it's important that we don't forget testosterone. So these hormones are oestrogen, and a lot of us have heard about oestrogen. Then there's a hormone progesterone. Then there's FSH, which is a follicle-stimulating hormone, so it stimulates follicles. And then there's LH, which is a luteinizing hormone, so it works on something called the luteum. Okay. And then there is testosterone. Yes, women have testosterone. And men also have these hormones. We just have them in different amounts, but also in women, they are cyclical meaning they're not the same throughout this 28-day cycle. And this is what makes a woman's cycle cyclical, which is what it is. It's because the hormones vary um, throughout this 28-day period. So on day one to about day 14, but let's start with day one to day seven, um, which is when the woman is having her period. So she is shedding blood. Um, her two hormones, progesterone and oestrogen, are low. And they are supposed to be low um, because you are cleansing, you are getting rid of the old blood, and you're about to start something new. Uh, now, the period itself should not last for seven days. Um, it lasts for about three to five days. So now, number one, is your cycle 28 days? Number two, are your periods three to five days? Um, so even though a woman would feel different things throughout the cycle, it should not be debilitating. Yes, during your, your cycle, you will feel that, um, um, and it's not as bad, you'll see, you'll feel that you're generally just kind of a little bit low, um, but we should not be having the pains that we're having. That is not natural. That is not what is supposed to be happening. Um, Yes, you will tend to retain a little bit of water, but you should not be swelling up and blowing up and having severe breast tenderness. You, you feel certain things because when your oestrogen is low, you tend to feel a, a pain a little bit more um, because oestrogen helps with all of that. So that's the first seven days where these two hormones are generally low. Um, and then what happens, the body says, okay, so we have shed the blood. Now we need to prepare. Your body is always, women, your body is always preparing for the possibility of you getting pregnant. Um, okay. So right now I'm talking about the menstrual cycle in relation to the reproductive system, to us being able to reproduce. But I need to say it here so that you understand later on. Today we're going to talk about our hormones and the effect on the brain. But I think it's first important to understand their effect on the reproductive system. So your body is always trying to, hoping that this is the time you're going to get pregnant. It's just always getting ready. So after the cycle is completed, this is a very coordinated, very beautifully done, fearfully and wonderfully made as a woman, that the brain, the hypothalamus, will say, okay, we have shed the blood. Now let's start the process of getting an egg ready. 
So the brain will release um, a hormone, the follicle stimulating hormone, which will then come and act on the ovary. Um, so yes, hormones are chemical messengers. So they're produced in one part of the body and they act in another part of the body. So the follicle stimulating hormone will come from the brain and it will travel in the blood and act on the ovaries and say, ovaries, we need to get an egg ready. All right. Um, so then four follicles, four, four eggs, so to speak, will come forward um, under this influence and they will start to release a hormone, oestrogen. Right now, a lot of people think oestrogen is a bad thing. Oestrogen is a beautiful um, hormone. That's why from day seven um, of our cycle, when oestrogen starts to peak because these four eggs are releasing it, um, we start to feel energized. Right, um, our skin is looking good because oestrogen is responsible for making our skin nice and elastic. Um, our heart is working well because oestrogen works to decrease um, cholesterol and plaque buildup in our system, right? So, so oestrogen is being released and, and you're, feeling, you're feeling good. This is the time when you're supposed to go out and do the things that you need to do because you're feeling on top of the world because oestrogen is having this effect on you. So these four follicles release this oestrogen and then one become a dominant one so it steps even more forward and say, I will release the egg. And then it releases. So the brain then says, okay, it releases more follicle stimulating uh, hormone. And then there's ovulation. That's on day 14. The egg bursts out and goes into the fallopian tube, um, expecting that it's going to be fertilized. As that happens, from where the egg came from, um, that follicle, this is what we call it, becomes a body. It doesn't just die. It becomes what we call the corpus luteum. And then it starts to release a chemical called progesterone. So oestrogen peaks on day 14, and you're feeling great on day 14. So that tells you that oestrogen is something good for us women to have. Okay? It peaks on day 14. The egg is released. From where it's released, that substance, that follicle becomes a corpus luteum. Corpus is body, luteum is yellow, it's just called a yellow body that releases this progesterone. And the progesterone says, I'm going to prepare the womb um, for the egg to be, once it's fertilized, to settle on. So it literally creates this beautiful red carpet, which is the menstrual blood, the, the blood before it becomes the menstrual blood. So it lines the lining of the, of the womb. Um, and the corpus luteum continues to make this progesterone. As this happens, your oestrogen level starts to drop, but you're still feeling great. There's anticipation. You are focused. You've got lots of energy because of the these two hormones being perfectly balanced when your system is working well. The egg only lives for 24 hours. It is very particular. It will not wait, and then it passes. So when the body realizes that, there has not been um, fertilization or implantation. Then the corpus luteum then becomes the corpus albicans. It loses its yellow color. It becomes a white uh, substance. It stops making progesterone. So progesterone as well as oestrogen start to go down. That is in the last seven days of your cycle. This is when you start to feel tired and not energized and not able to focus and all you want to do is sleep uh, but this um and you may also feel a little bit of anxiety why uh as progesterone starts to drop progesterone acts also on your brain to work with GABA to help you keep calm so and throughout this process testosterone is there in the in the background um and testosterone in women often gets converted to um, estrogen. So it gets used. So it's not just made um, in the ovaries, it's also made by your adrenal glands, but also our fat tissue is also making these hormones. So when the cycle is balanced, this is what happens to us every single month. Um, and you can know just when you're ovulating, you can know when your periods are going to come, and you can know when you're going to be feeling very energized and able to focus and do things, and you know when you're going to be feeling down, so that you know how to plan your life um, as a woman. But also knowing when you ovulate means that 
for the longest time, what women used to do to not get pregnant is to just try and stay awake on that day. Uh, but also remembering that the sperm lives for 72 hours. So if you have intercourse from about day 12, um, the sperms could literally be sitting there just waiting for the egg saying, when is she coming? When is she coming? I think in about three days time. And they wait and wait until ovulation happens. So I generally say uh, to men and women who are using the natural method that from about day, day 11 to about day uh, 15, 16, that's when uh, a woman is likely to fall pregnant. Though she ovulates on day 14, the sperms live for 72 hours, even though it, the egg only lives for 24 hours. So that's a way that a woman can know her cycle. And if she wants to get pregnant, then she would know this is the ideal time um, to, to engage. Um, now, that is in relation to our reproductive health. And I think a lot of people know about this. But what a lot of us do not realize is that these hormones do not only act on our reproductive system. They work on our cardiovascular system. So that's our heart and our blood vessels. Um, we, we have receptors that read um, these, these, these hormones. They work on our bones. They work on our brains. And this is what the topic is. One of the most uh, interesting things that I realized, I mean, we, we always knew that, oh, women are hormonal and then they become moody. But we, we all, I think a lot of us just think that's something that just said, but it is scientific. So a woman's cycle and these hormones have an impact on the brain. And the impact is twofold. One, oestrogen and progesterone affect the structure of the brain. I want you to pause and think about that. It affects the structure, how the brain is formed. Um, so they protect the brain cells from dying. They, so they are neuroprotective, but they also set um, the structure of the brain. Now, remember, in, in everything that we do, we're trying to wire our brain in a certain way. So can you imagine if your hormones are not balanced, then the structure of you lose out the benefits or you structure your brain in an incorrect way. Um, and the results may only be seen later on in life uh, where we end up with Alzheimer's and dementia. This is why women are generally protected from, from these conditions during um, their reproductive years, assuming that their hormones are, are balanced. But then if they have not been, it may show on later in life, the structure of the brain becomes compromised because we lose out on the neuroprotectiveness uh, of these hormones when they're not I have to keep saying this. It's not just about having oestrogen and progesterone. So don't just go and get the next available oestrogen for progesterone. They have to be in perfect balance. Like right now, none of us know how much oestrogen and how much progesterone our bodies have made. The brain is responsible for reading the situation in our body and adjusting these to the exact amount, if not interfered with. The other thing that uh, these two hormones, especially, well, three, including testosterone, have in terms of our brain is they actually work with the, the neurotransmitters. These are the chemicals in our brain that are responsible for how we feel. Um, so especially, as I mentioned, progesterone works very closely with GABA. GABA is responsible for helping us feel calm. So when women don't have enough progesterone, then they tend to suffer from anxiety. Okay. Uh, testosterone is responsible for our desire and our ambition. So when we don't have enough testosterone, then we, we lose our desire for life, for our partner, for, for, for going out there and doing things. Um, and, 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 and oestrogen works very closely with serotonin and dopamine. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of antidepressants called SSRI. Oestrogen is the most potent SSRI, meaning it preserves serotonin and allows it to work in the brain the way it's supposed to. It helps with the production of serotonin. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter. It's a chemical that helps us to feel calm and have that feeling of well-being. How many of us are lacking that? And often we're busy. And, and I know I have put patients on, you know, um, substances to help them make enough um, serotonin and then they're not responding appropriately 
when I had not looked at their hormonal balance and seen that do they have enough serotonin? So, I mean, do they have enough estrogen so that serotonin can work well? A lot of people are saying that they're suffering from lack of motivation and focus. That's because of dopamine. Um, oestrogen works very closely with dopamine in the same way that it works with serotonin to help us have focus and motivation. That's why I say during day seven to day 21, when oestrogen is peaking, that's when women, you're most focused, um, you're most motivated, and that's when you should do things, working with your body and not working against your body and trying to do everything in the last week when you're just feeling like, you know, the world is just not worth doing anything in. Um, it's important to understand that. But when your oestrogen is not enough, then at no point do you feel that motivation. And, and, and as much as you can try and read the psychological books and go here and there, it's important that we fix the foundation, which is our hormones, so that our brain, the structure, and also how we feel um, can, 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 work, um, can work well. All right. So in summary, we need, we need this hormones to be, to be working in balance throughout these 28 days, being released um, and having their effect um, on the different systems. One of the systems also, apart from the brain, I will come back to the brain, um, that I'm also seeing is the effect uh, on bone. Did you know that your bone is its strongest between 25 and the age of 30? That's when you lay down bone, and from then on, we start to lose bone. But did you know that you need oestrogen to be able to lay down bone? Yes, progesterone also plays a role, but it is critical that one has oestrogen to be able to lay down bone. And then from then on, we start to lose our, our bone mass. Uh, our bones uh, are not only our skeletal structure to help us be strong and stand, but they are also reservoirs for minerals such as calcium. Um, so if we're not laying down bone, we're also not having the minerals being deposited in there. But as the years goes by, we, we often use our calcium. You know, the body will come into the bone and say, oh, can I borrow some calcium, please? And that can deplete if it's not being put back. But we need oestrogen um, for that laying of bone to happen properly. Um, and what I'm seeing now, uh, because I'm sending women for bone density scan, is women at the age of 40, having severe bone loss, which means that by the time they are 50, they're at high risk of fractures. Um, I just saw a, a 40, 40, 40, 42 year old lady um, the other day, and she'd been on, and I will talk about contraceptives now, she'd been on contraceptives for nine years. Um, and there's a family history of, uh, uh, of osteoporosis. So when we send her for a scan, it confirmed that now, She's very close. Um, she's, she's got what we call osteopenia, which is reduced bone uh, density. Um, and if nothing is done, definitely she will end up with osteoporosis. Um, and many of us don't know this. We're just, you know, going through life. Um, uh, and, and that happens at menopause because then we, we, we stop having oestrogen. Oh, I didn't go into that. At menopause, when these hormones... Um, go down both oestrogen and progesterone we stop ovulating and our hormones go down and you know menopause is not what it is said to be during our reproductive years what we're really supposed to be doing other than having children if you want uh, and so true is also be laying down uh, good health for your old age so good brain health good bone health um, good skin health so that in your old age the foundation was laid strong, that even as you're losing things, you're not suffering, you're not ending up with diseases um, of the brain, of the bone, um, of your skin, of your reproductive system. Um, if the cycle was controlled by the body naturally, um, the way it was, it was supposed to be done. So our reproductive hormones are not just for the reproductive system, they are for our entire entire system all right um please at any time because you feel free to interject and ask questions so in summary on the brain oestrogen and progesterone have effects on our mood on our cognition which is our thinking 
on our memory. That's why women, you see them when they are going through perimenopause, they're like, I'm very forgetful when these hormones are dropping. And on our behavior, it, interestingly, um, I saw a young girl today, and um, so I'm going to move into contraceptives. She, 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 she came in because her cycle was irregular and she had used a, a contraceptive that I absolutely hate, uh, Depo-Provera. Uh, I can say that. I have hated that since 2010 um, and I have never injected a woman with it uh, from 2010. Um, and she said she'd only used it twice. But one of the things she noticed was she was not herself. She said the decisions that she made about where she stays, who her friends were, she said she felt like she lost the ability to discern so she made wrong friendships and she didn't see the red flags um and she she truly believed the only thing that had changed in her life was that she started using uh this and and i mean she doesn't know me she didn't even know i was having this presentation i just thought it was such a confirmation for me on the importance of talking to women about how contraceptives then affect them so let's move into the issue of, uh, I've, I've spoken to you about how the system is supposed to work, what these hormones are supposed to be, forget what you have heard about oestrogen and progesterone, naturally occurring and working in a balanced way in your body, they will give you a beautiful reproductive life, beautiful mind, beautiful bones, um, and your menopause will not be the thing of horrors that uh, um, people go through. Now. As Brother Bukosi was saying, one of the things about, uh, the, about birth control was it was great when it was introduced because, you know, it gave women liberty and freedom. And I will not lie, I was excited when I ran my women's wellness center um, because I, I, I actually, I, one of our lines was that we could help you regulate your own cycle with the birth control. Um, so that you knew exactly when you're going to be having your periods. But as I started to do that, women would come back to me. I remember this one young girl shouting at me saying, are you trying to break my marriage? You know, my desire for my husband has completely gone. You need to fix me. Um, and women coming in and saying, look, I want to have a child. I've been off this depot and it's been 18 months and I still don't have my cycle. Um, so what are these hormones that we use to... Uh, in terms of birth control. So the oestrogen, the progesterone, and the testosterone, and the follicle stimulating hormones that I've described are natural hormones that your body makes. Okay, so those are natural hormones. Then we have what we call synthetic hormones. These are hormones that are made in the lab to have an effect on a woman's body and change the cycle so that, um, one, she doesn't ovulate, so that she doesn't have to get pregnant, and change the, the level. The, the ultimate thing is to stop ovulation or make the mucus stick so that sperms cannot pass through. Um, but ultimately, it is, if you can stop ovulation, then if, but it, remember, if you stop ovulation, what happens? You don't release progesterone. So you don't get those great benefits um, that um, progesterone gives, like the calming um, in your mind, the structuring of your brain, uh, helping you retain your bone density, helping with liver and kidney health and making sure that your reproductive system is, is great and you don't get those. You don't get to have progesterone if you're stopping ovulation. Um, so birth control is mostly synthetic um, hormones that are made in the lab and given to women to give them control over their ability or over their reproductive system. However, what we failed as the medical profession to look into early enough is as we're stopping women from getting pregnant, what effect is this having on the other systems that also have these receptors? What effect is this having on the brain? What effect is this having on the bone? What effect is this having on the cardiovascular system? And so what we have seen is women having high cholesterol, women having hypertension, Women having clots. You've heard of young women who just collapse and die um, from a clot, um, and they were the only thing they were taking is an oral contraceptive. You know, it 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 it, it really scares me because there's so many women in the practice I work in uh, who have been on contraceptives that they think nothing of it. Um, you know, they would just call and not even come in and say, 
can the doctor just give me a script for, for, for my years or for whatever contraceptive they're on? And um, when I try to have them come in, it, they just feel like, no, I don't want to be spending all that money to come in and see you. It's just the contraceptive, but it is not. I'm thinking, I don't know what your blood pressure is like. I don't know how much you're clotting. I don't know what your bone density is like. I don't know what your brain is like. Um, I don't know what your cholesterol is like. So I don't know any of these things. And the woman is only concerned with that she doesn't fall pregnant. And then later on, um, that's when I, the, the women would come in in their 40s and their 50s, because I'm seeing women in their 40s having uh, uh, hormonal issues, uh, hormonal imbalances. But also one of the scariest things I'm seeing is that we're starting kids as young as 13 on contraceptives. Now, I know one of, one of the things I was adamant about in my practice when I ran a women's wellness center was that no child under 21 was ever to be put on contraceptives. I should have said 25. Why? Because remember, the frontal lobe is fully developed at the age of 25, and your brain develops under the influence of progesterone uh, and, and, and testosterone as well as uh, progesterone. So when we put children on synthetic hormones because we want to regulate their cycle and make sure that they don't get teenage pregnancy, what are we doing to their brain health, brain development? Forget brain health, brain development. What are we doing to the ability to lay down bone at that critical phase? What are we doing to their risk factors? I'm seeing young girls with high blood pressure. I'm like, I'm, you're 25. What business do you have having high blood pressure? We're seeing young girls dying from clots um, because we have put them on these hormones from an early age. So synthetic hormones come into your body. They don't work in a cyclical way because they are man-made and they come in and they've got, either they've got a fixed dose or um, they try to mimic the system, but they never can. And also in how they act on the body is they are very strong. So when they act, it is in a very forceful way to force the body to do something. Um, so those are synthetic hormones. We also have what we call um, now bioidentical hormones, and they sound nice, right? Um, yes. Yes. Um, I wanted to, to speak more on the on the birth control on, on, on young girls, because I know it is not only for birth control that they sometimes prescribe this uh, birth control for. What other reasons do people take birth control for besides just avoiding pregnancy? All right. Okay. So I just wanted, okay, I'll, I'll come back to, to, that, to that question. I just wanted to highlight because I know there are people who are like, okay, I'm not taking a synthetic because when you say synthetic, there's always, oh, but what about bioidentical hormones? which are hormones which look very similar um, to what our, our body makes. Um, and often they are just extracted um, from, from plants, um, but they also have an effect on the body. So even though they are the same, um, remember that they are not cyclical. The dosage is important when you, when you give somebody bioidentical hormones. Um, and then lastly, we have phytohormones, which are plant-based hormones, which you would get like if you eat your tofu or you drink your 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 red red uh, raspberry leaf tea. Um, so those are the ones. So yes, coming back to the issue of uh, young girls. So let's look at birth control. So birth control, well, the synthetic hormones. You 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 have them as pills, and you have them as injections. You have them as patches. You have them as rings that you put um, inside your vagina. You have them as uh, IUDs that you put inside of your womb. Um, all of them are hormonal. The whole point is that they affect your hormonal system. So that could be, yes, to stop you from ovulating, but a lot of young girls are on things like yes to stop them from having acne, um, pimples. Um, and often that is just an imbalance of having too much testosterone. And, and during that phase, um, you know, it is, it is not a must that a young girl going through puberty must have acne. It is not. It is also a sign of unbalanced hormones. And, but we can't also just, we can't blame it. Um, okay, so let me be clear. So young girls are either put on the birth control to stop them from falling pregnant, or they're, used, they're given them because they say, oh, but her periods are not regular, so it is to regulate her cycle. Um, which is a, it's not a real period that they have. It's just a withdrawal bleed. When they come off the hormones and they bleed, 
but it's not regulating the cycle. It is not the way that it was supposed to be. So they never, their body never learns to regulate itself when they're put on birth control so early on in life. And they're also put on it for, for the acne um, as well. Now, they can be put on, on hormones that just keep their oestrogen and progesterone levels the same. Um, there isn't a birth control that just gives you oestrogen. That would be very dangerous um, for, 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 for women in reproductive years. So they put you on a pill um, that has both oestrogen and progesterone in a synthetic form. So when we test for them, we have to ask, uh, especially for the progesterone, for the synthetic form. Um, so that, that's the pill. They also have birth control that try to mimic um, the cycle. So they would have different amounts of hormones um, for the different uh, days of the cycle, but they can never be how the body designed it to be. Um, and we also have the, the injectables, the, pro, the depot and the new estuary, and those are pro, progesterone, synthetic progesterone high. And they, they, they just, they, they stop the, the lining um, of, 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 the, of the uterus. Um, and that's why when you come off them, then you have the, the bleed. So one you inject for three months and the other one for two months. So now when young girls are put on these, for whatever reason, be it for acne, uh, be it to stop them from getting pregnant, be it to regulate their reproductive uh, cycle, then it affects the structure. Remember I said progesterone and oestrogen are necessary for the structure of the brain. So it affects that but it also affects their mood um, as well. It affects their serotonin levels. And, and I, I suppose this is why we're seeing a lot of young people with depression. I'm not blaming it on the birth control. We, we do know that there are other hormones coming from the outside, uh, which are, we call xenoestrogens, which is xeno is like xenophobia is foreign. Uh, xeno foreign oestrogens. Um, and that can be from the meat that we eat. So a lot of women, I hear them, they come to my practice and they're very happy. They're like, I don't eat a lot of red meat. Um, I actually eat just a lot of chicken. And what's the best way to fatten a chicken? Oestrogen is what gives women the structure of their body, their softness and their fat. Um, and one of the ways that chickens are fattened is to be injected with oestrogen. So when women are eating a lot of uh, chicken thinking it is healthier, you will find that then they are being exposed to high levels um, of, of, of oestrogen. And remember, it's not just about having oestrogen and progesterone. The balance between the two um, is very important. And then there are also other things that we call endocrine disruptors. There's stuff in our uh, personal care, in the plastics that we, the food is, is packaged in, that are also um, endocrine disruptors. So they interfere with how the hormones are working. So because we're eating a diet that affects our, 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 our hormonal balance and we're using body products and wearing clothing and putting on makeup and eating from packages um, and interacting in an environment that is disrupting our hormonal system, then when the, hom the hormones are in balance, what do we do? We go to our doctor and we go on birth control. And because then we, we kind of see our period uh, for three to five days, if we're lucky and the birth control works well, we're happy thinking that all is well when it is not. It is a, it is a false sense of well-being, if I can call it that. And, and the, the most difficult women for me to convince are those who are happy on their birth control because their acne is gone and their, their period pains are gone, and, uh, the, and the, 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 there's regularity in terms of when they are bleeding, and it's not so heavy. And I'm thinking, but what's happening to your bone health and what's happening to your mental health in the long term? Um, you know, so that's why we're having this conversation. But um, I think it's important now uh, as, as for you, um, you know, as you're working with your health practitioner, um, because it's not like, um, well, I mean, for, 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 for the young girls, yes, after you've, you've, you've given birth, 
the you know the health practitioner will generally talk to you about going on some kind of birth control but most of the time it is women who come in and mothers and fathers parents who bring their children in to say can we start on something but it's important um to to know the effect that while you're trying to deal with your reproductive system or, or deal with your skin um the question is is the price that you're paying in terms of your bone health and your mental health too much and i'm of the opinion that yes it is too much uh, because mental health has become a real issue second to to hormonal imbalances that i see is mental health issues across the board in men women um, and of all ages and uh, and i know that it becomes difficult to correct mental health issues without ensuring that the hormonal systems are working well I think I have spoken uh, for quite a long time, uh, and I'm sure I have said a lot. It's a lot for people to take this. So, Brother Kosi, if I can hand over to you for you to ask questions, let's engage. And if people have questions, there is so much to share. Um, we haven't even spoken about menopause and perimenopause um, and what people can do, but let's engage. Yes, thank you very much, Doctor. Um, really appreciate that information, and I, I, I'm actually tempted to. Um, now that you have touched a number of things on things that you've observed in your practice in relation to the to these pills, I I would want to check if Nara she's around. She's she's in the platform. In her practice, what is what is it that she's um, seeing in relation to to this birth control? Because I know that she's dealing mainly with uh, mental health. Nara, are you there? <clears throat> Before we get into questions and answers. Okay, maybe let's take the questions and answers while you're waiting for Sister Naraya. Uh, Noltando, I see your hand is up. Good afternoon, you may everyone. Um... Hello, Kukosi. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, uh, Sissi. Welcome. Thank you so much. Um, sorry, I just joined, uh, I mean, the, the chat very late and I've been trying, believe you me, and until someone assisted me with a direct link so i guess i i missed out a lot but i'm i'm glad i just jo joined when 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 doctor was was talking about my problem like the hormonal imbalance so <clears throat> excuse me i would like to ask from her a uh, what what really causes hormonal I imbalance and how how can this uh is it is it curable can can she can she assist on 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 such things because i was told that i i have a female hormonal imbalance and uh, when i like check the symptoms on google and it, it, it it's all that i had so i wanted to i want to believe that it's it is it so I just wanted to know if she is able to assist with female hormonal imbalance. It's yes, just, thank and you. also, sorry, uh, also I wanted to ask if is it possible that we can get maybe a, a recorded clip for, 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 for this chat, if possible. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Noltando. Yes, there is a recording. You can actually, there's a link on the message block place there you can actually join the the whatsapp group where you can get the information and also the link um on the recording i will also encourage those that are not part of the group to join so that at least they can be informed and get the recordings of whatever topic that may have covered before you okay. respond to sister Nolten, i'll ask that you i'll ask brother simpiwe to ask the question or it's a comment then after that you can respond to both of them <clears throat> evening uh everyone thank you doctor for a informative presentation i just wanted to know when it comes to um contraceptives what other healthier way can a woman uh do or take to prevent uh, being pregnant but also 
not affecting the brain, as you said, and other parts of the body. Thank you. Okay, doctor. All right, so just um, starting with those two questions, what is hormonal imbalance? So what I described for the first uh, 50 minutes was hormonal balance, which is the beautiful interplay between progesterone, uh, oestrogen, testosterone, follicle stimulating, all the hormones working at the right time um, to be released so that everything goes according to plan. You have your first seven days where these hormones are like this, you have your, that's hormonal uh, balance, right? Hormonal imbalance is when those things are not, are not working out. So either your oestrogen is too much or your oestrogen is too low or your progesterone is too low. Maybe you're not making any progesterone. Um, or your testosterone also can be too low. Um, so that is what we mean when we say hormonal imbalance. So then what happens is because, because remember, every hormone causes the next phase to happen. So when the hormones are not balanced, all right, then things don't happen rightly. So if you don't have that, uh, oestrogen level going high and peaking, then you can't have ovulation. If you don't have ovulation, then you can't have progesterone being released. If you can't have progesterone being released, then you can't get pregnant. If you can't sustain the, the so if you can't, and if you can't have uh, enough progesterone being made, even if you get pregnant, you're going to have a miscarriage. Um, so that's what hormonal imbalance is. So it will present in different ways, irregular periods, um, headaches, migraines, uh, period pains, um, uh, infertility, miscarriages, um, and it can present also, like I said, with uh, bone, bone density issues. Um, it can present with um, um, depression um, and mental health issues. That's what hormonal imbalance. So, Every woman, when, when you're told you have a hormonal imbalance, there are 74 people here. Let's assume all of them are women. Yeah. And then all of them are told you have hormonal imbalance. It could be different things. It could be that woman number one has low estrogen. Woman number two has too much estrogen. Okay. Woman number three does not have progesterone. So it never means the same thing for women. So then your doctor has to, what I do is I, I then send my women to, to the lab and because we would have an idea of, of what kind of hormonal imbalance we're dealing with. Um, and then we send them off to the lab to go have their hormones checked. It's not that easy because some women don't have a starting, don't have a period at all. So it becomes difficult to know when we do, let's say we do your, your hormonal test, blood test today, and your oestrogen level is like five. It means absolutely nothing to me. Um, if I don't know where in your cycle you are. So then that's why I have to do all of them and it can work out to be quite expensive um, to try and see. Now, I think that the other question was, what causes hormonal imbalances, all right? Um, what causes the things to not work according to how they are designed to work that we end up thinking we need the, the, the synthetic medication to balance our hormones, which it doesn't, it's a fallacy. It does, they do not balance your hormones. Um, well, it's, it can be caused by lifestyle, all right? So the diet that we eat, I've already mentioned, a diet that is high in animal products, because animal products have hormones in them. Um, chicken, I have already mentioned, dairy products, um, those kind of things will affect. Um, exercise affects your hormones. Um, stress affects your hormones because uh, cortisol will Will, will, will interfere. Cortisol will, will stop your brain from dealing with the reproductive system if you're constantly under stress. And remember, stress is not just uh, stuff that's happening to you from the outside. Stress could be an illness that's happening to you. Um, stress could be over-exercise, all right? So what the body interprets as stress. So I think I need to rephrase my questions to my women because sometimes I, I ask them, are you stressed? But what I'm trying to establish is what I'm saying to them, what I'm asking myself in my head, and it's just coming mm -hmm. out is, I wonder if this, 
Uh, can you just mm -hmm. mute yourself, please? Um, Sandy. Um, you both what I'm asking. Okay. Very kind. Brother Paul, may you please help us and mute this Tandy. All right, thank you so much. What thank I'm you. asking myself is, are you releasing high levels of cortisol because they are going to stop? I see a lot of young girls in metric and they stop having their periods because they're under stress and duress. I work with athletes and because they're over-exercising, um, it stops their periods and literally they're compromising themselves. I remember I saw a young girl who was a runner and she was having constant fractures um, to her to her lower leg. And I said, I said, I re actually recommended that she switched sports because she just was just destroying her body um, in that competition. You see, you've heard about it with um, young girls who do ballet and they stop having their periods and and all of that because they are so small in that they don't have enough fat. And they're not releasing enough oestrogen, and then it affects their their bone health and their mental health and their reproductive health and their ability to to have children. So diet is important, exercise is important, lifestyle is important, and stress levels. Um, but also stress, like I mean, also having other sicknesses, um, having things like uh, diabetes. Um, those are the kind of things that will cause it. What was the second question again? Yeah. All right. Um, um, I'll just follow on the typed questions. Um, there's a question from Puleng. I believe that you answered this question on how do I balance hormones naturally? I think that was answered and asked well, what are the risks of conceiving after the age 30? What are the risks of conceiving after age 30? All right. So Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, uh, I don't think I've, I've answered how can you balance your hormones, but one of one of the best things. Oh, I haven't said this. Another thing that is a sign of hormonal imbalance is fibroids. That is uh, because of oestrogen dominance, uh, where you have too much oestrogen in your body. So fibroids are also a sign of hormonal imbalance. Um, one of the ways which, uh, as women, we can balance our hormones is by ensuring that. I'm going to put it the way it is. Being on a whole food plant-based diet is the best way. Um, what we get from plants is what we call phytoestrogens, which are plant oestrogens. How they are different to um, bioidentical hormones and how they are different to um, synthetic hormones is that they are very gentle in how they work on your body and they stop even um, the environmental hormones really from from having such a great impact um, on your system so when you're on a whole food plant based diet that's 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 number one um, then one you're reducing the number of xeno foreign estrogens you're putting into your body but you're also introducing good uh, phyto uh, estrogens to help balance your own system that's number one. Number two, um, exercising uh, becomes important. Number three, drinking water, because everything in your body happens in a medium um, of, of fluid and water balance is very critical. Number four, making sure we get uh, sunshine, sunlight. Um, one, it also helps regulate our, our body clock. All these hormones are released on time. Yeah, for everything, there's a time and a season. The God who designed our body is is very meticulous when it comes to time and our body works according to time so when we get exposed to the sun in the morning and we see the sunset at night and we're in bed at the right time and melatonin kicks in and we have a regular um time for waking up and sleeping and our hormones our body knows when to release hormones at the right time um so sunlight becomes important for regulating that and for also giving us vitamin d which is going to work together with calcium and to help with our bone health and to make serotonin. So everything works well together. It's not just the reproductive system is there in isolation. Um, it's affected by everything else. Um, temperance means um, taking good things in moderation and, and avoiding the bad. So exercise is great, but there are women who are over-exercising. Many of us are not exercising enough, so I'm not talking to you. Um, all right. Um, 
So taking good things in moderation and avoiding the bad. So avoiding the things that are going to affect your 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 hormones, this love affair we have of chicken as women. Um, you know. Um, and then um uh, getting fresh air and uh sleeping well. Sleep is absolutely critical um at night and the hours before midnight are critical. So if you're not sleeping well, uh, your hormones are going to be unbalanced because your cortisol level is going to take uh, predominance. Um, and then trusting in God, why is that important? When we trust in God, no matter what we're going through, no matter the challenges that are coming from the outside, no matter the illnesses that we're having, that we're dealing with to you know, restore things, um, then cortisol does not become the dominant thing in our body. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Yes, it has, it's important, it has its role, um, in our lives, but it must not be dominant. In the same way that estrogen must not be dominant, in the same way that progesterone must not be dominant. Um, that's how you balance your, your system. And then we avoid the unnecessary. What is the unnecessary? The personal products that we use that have endocrine disruptors. You know, we're putting things in our hair and, and on our body and lotions and, and all of these things. There was a beautiful book um, I got. Um, it was called When Beauty Kills. And it was written by a young woman who ended up with, uh, uh, it was either ovarian cancer, it was one of the reproductive system or breast cancer. And she realized it was from a the, lot of the makeup that she, she used, um, you know, in her earlier years. And she said, if only she had known. Um, and so we're sharing this knowledge so that nobody says, if only I had known. Um, it can be that I knew, but I just didn't do differently. Um, you know, so avoiding the unnecessary it's just it's just um affecting your system overburdening your your liver with alcohol ladies ladies were not designed the same way as men alcohol has a greater negative impact um on a woman in terms of her cycle in terms of uh, her fat in terms of her brain um, than men it has three times i remember i i, I used to see women and they'd say they're occasional drinkers and their liver was kaput from this occasional drinking. And I remember speaking to Dr. Mashkiso about it and him explaining this and then doing further research into it. Um, so avoiding the unnecessary. Um, so when people are stressed, this is what they turn to. That's going to unbalance your hormones. Um, and then ensuring that, I think one of the questions was, 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 can I help? These are the foundational things. And then there are things that we can then do um, including putting you on the right kind of supplements. You need zinc uh, for your hormones to be balanced. You need vitamin C, you need uh, inositol, you need vitamin E. And then there are herbs that you can use, things like black cohosh um, and red raspberry leaf. Um, so these are natural things that, that, that occur in nature that can help bring our balance um, back. Um, and I will tell you, all of them fall negative. I have not found anything in the medical field that um, allows me to balance women's hormones such that I just, I just outright tell women, this is not part of your mainstream prescription. If you really want to balance your hormone, this is the route that, um, that you need to go. In terms of birth control, I think that was the other question, what can women do? The only contraceptive I, I recommend for women is the copper IUD, which can be inserted for up to 10 years. Um, because it does not affect the hormonal system. So it's not going to affect your mental health and it's not going to affect your, your bone uh, density. And, and, and so people will ask, uh, I know people in, 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 in our faith will say, oh, but people should not be using any of that. I, I, I don't deal with just people who are Christian nature. So I, I recommend that so that their mind can be clear enough and they can be fully themselves to make better decisions uh, about other things. So I recommend um, the, the copper device um, so that their, their, their hormones and, their, and, and, and all of that is not interfered with. And a lot of women also at that point don't have balanced hormones. So they don't know, they can't use the natural method uh, of, of contraceptives, which is um, the withdrawal method or using the, or the calendar method or checking the ovulation and, and avoiding that. When a woman has an irregular cycle, she can't use any of, it becomes difficult to use the, 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 those other methods because they need to know 
uh, when they're ovulating. And the withdrawal method requires that both partners be involved um, because it's the man who has to withdraw. Um, and uh, what, what, what then is important to understand is during day 11 to day 16, everything about a woman is saying, make a baby. So it becomes very difficult um, for a woman, you know, who is not understanding what's happening to her um, to have that level of uh, self-control and knowing what it is they need to do. So that's why we do these lessons to explain that, yes, that's when you will desire your partner the most. Uh, but just know that if you need to be on something if you don't want to get pregnant. Thank you very much, Doc. Um, just a minute. Um, I think the other thing that I, I, I would want to let you know, Brother Paul, may you please mute yourself? Thank you. Yes, um, I think we will have a second session next week, which will be dealing mainly or with the with the with the alternative alternative methods. And also, I think it will touch on how do you balance your hormones before you can actually move to other methods that one can use because you need to have your hormones proper aligned. Yeah, but so that at least you're not going to experience what you are, you are not interested in. I think the next coming session will actually deal with that. How do you deal with these things? How do you put your body into proper hormone balance? Yeah, I'm just letting you know so that at least, because I know that there's so much information that the, doc, uh, the doctor is bringing now, which if you do not have a pen and paper, just after we switch off this platform, most of you would have forgotten. But I want to encourage you that you, you come again next week and we unpack the other alternatives and also how do you start working on your hormonal balancing so that at least if you choose to follow uh, the natural way, you'll be able to uh, do it in such a way that you, you will still remain safe. Uh, well, so I saw two hands, maybe before I take these two hands, um, which is Bonsoir, as well as Simpiwe. I will ask Umpo to read just two questions, then Uto can respond, then I take these three hands that I see now. We are coming to a close, beloved. If there's any hand, you can actually raise it up so that at least we can make sure that you all get a chance to ask your questions. All right, thank you very much. Um, I think you did not answer the question of conceiving after the age 30. Um, perhaps maybe if you can just keep them short and brief because of time. Thank you. Um, okay, so I have heard about uh, the dangers of conceiving and, uh, over the age of 30. I get that a lot uh, in my practice. What is important is May I ask, sorry, Doc, uh, may you please mute yourself? Thank you. All right. So what's important is for a woman to remain healthy uh, more than more than the age of the woman, right? It's very important for a woman to be to be to be healthy if she is to successfully carry a uh, pregnancy. Like I said, I've worked in labor ward um, for the longest times. Um, I've seen 17 year olds have complications. I've seen 17 year olds uh, have previous deformities and I've seen 46 year olds deliver perfectly healthy babies. So it is not set and cast in stone um, that when you're older, and 30 is very young, <laughs> by the way. Um, what, well, in, in our time, it's actually getting to be old. What's important is to make sure a woman is healthy, you're on a healthy diet, you have a healthy lifestyle, because um, you will have the eggs. You were born with all the eggs you're going to have. Um, and then once the ovaries um, stop functioning, um, then you can't have children. As long as a woman is having a regular cycle, they can have a child. And as long as they are healthy, they can bring a healthy child. And the men also, it's important. Uh, men are constantly making um, new seed. So it's important for a man to be uh, also healthy so that the seed can be healthy. Um, there is nothing wrong with conception and the, uh, over the age of 30, over the age of 35, over the age of 40. However, I have seen, I think the youngest person I have seen having uh, premature ovarian failure, which is menopause, before time was 23. 
So what you need to be mindful. You need to know your family history and know when your mother went into menopause and her sisters and your sisters um, so that you have an idea. But if you don't live the life, same lifestyle that they live, it's able to prolong um, your, your fertility. Um, yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing women my age and they're telling you they're having hot flushes. And I'm thinking, huh, I could have two, three, four, five babies. <laughs> um, you know, so it's, uh, it's important um, to just keep ourselves healthy. Yes. So that's the question I have to answer. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Doc. I think the other thing that is important is that whatever statement that one um, hears, it is wise to investigate that thoroughly. Because for me, especially currently, it is not so safe to take um, everything that science is saying as a fact. Uh, it still needs to be tested whether it's true. For there are many things that have been that we have been told that they are scientific, but when you when you begin to investigate, you realize that there are many factors around that. So it's important that we we try to inform ourselves as much as we possibly can. So whatever decision that we make, we make an informed decision. For those that are Christians, I think there's a there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a book that we can use to test every state, scientific statement, which is the word. The Bible is the measuring ruler for every truth that comes. I think if we can use that as our standard, it will help us also to avoid unnecessary uh, problems in life. I saw Sister Bandi, saw your hand was up, and also Pela, your hand is up. Um, there is, um, is it this guy? I'm not, I'm not sure how, whether I'm pronouncing it well. Then there's Dolphin. May you keep your questions short and straight. Uh, you will just ask them all, then Doc will respond to them. So, you may go first, if you're still there. Okay, I think Upats, she's lost Bella. <coughs> Yes, I yourself my, and ask. My question, good evening, everybody. My question is around the use of a copper IUD. Is that not dangerous in terms of having a metal in your body for years? I've heard that this can cause problems. Could you please explain? Um, next person. Okay, good evening. Thank you very much for such a wonderful presentation, Doc. My question is um, damage control. Some of us have used these things and we've got patches as a result. We've got our wombs removed. So what is it that you can advise pertaining to damage that has already been done, Doc? Thank you. Dolphin? Unmute yourself. Bandi, so your hand was up. All right. Um, good, good evening. Um, I heard the doctor talk, um, talk about um, the symptoms of um, hormonal imbalance. So I wanted to ask now, how do you know that if your your hormones are in balance, like how do you know? Thank you very much, um, Doc. You may go ahead. All right, and I saw that there's a lot of questions in the inbox, so I will also I'll keep my answers short. Okay, how do you know your hormones are balanced? If you are having a regular cycle, you're not on you're not on any any pills. You're having a regular cycle, twenty eight days. Um, uh, it's your period are lasting, well, more regularity than anything else. Your periods are not lasting for greater than um, six days, five days ideal. Uh, it's not heavy bleeding. You're not having uh, mood, a severe mood, uncontrollable um, fluctuations. Um, it suggests that your hormones are balanced. Um, you're not, if you wanted to fall pregnant, you're not really struggling. Um, it suggests that your hormones are balanced. If you want to be a bit certain um, and you can afford it, you can have blood tests done um, to check your hormonal levels. Uh, 
But remember also with checking your blood hormones levels, it's not just the levels, it's also how you respond to the shift. So some women have what seems like the normal levels, but how their body responds to what the hormones were like before. Um, so that's what we call, uh, so the hormones are balanced, but they, they are responding to the hormonal shift. Uh, that's another topic altogether. Um, damage control, what can we do? Um, if, if, yes, you're right. A lot of women, by the time um, they are seen, a lot of other things have been done. I'm seeing somebody say a 13-year-old, they remove their ovary because they had cysts. So that's, that's quite sad. Um, so what's the damage control that can be done? If you still have your ovaries um, and you're not yet in menopause, hooray, something can still be done. Um, why not get in menopause? Because when you're in menopause, your ovaries have stopped. Your hormones are no longer part and participant of what's happening. There is damage control that can happen then um, in terms of not your reproductive health, obviously, but in terms of trying to minimize the damage to your bones, even if maybe you have lost a lot of bone, trying to make sure that you don't lose as rapidly and as fast. So these would have to be individualized. Uh, one of the things I do recommend is going on a plant-based diet. People on a meat diet, you require three times the amount of calcium in your diet to make sure that you're not losing calcium from bone to buffer the acid that comes as, as a response to the diet. Okay, so if you're on a plant-based diet, you need a third amount of the calcium because you're not making uh, a lot of acid. So you don't need to take calcium from your bone. So you reduce your chances of osteoporosis. Um, so even post-menopause, there are things that you can do for your brain health. But remember then the structure of your brain has already kind of been, you know, laid down. So it becomes very difficult later on to do damage control. If you're still in the pre-menopause phase and you're still having your hormones, one of the things is we need to balance your hormones um, as fast as we can. And then also as we, as we balance your hormones, so that becomes, that's your treatment, we need to do the right foundation of, having the right lifestyle um, to make sure that your, your hormones are not being pulled in a different direction while we're giving you treatment, um, which, is, which, is, which is what I find very upsetting about our profession, is that we don't, we don't try and fix things. We, we just kind of manage conditions and only to have to deal with things later on in life. Um, if, you, if all you had was your wound removed, that is not really a train smash. Um, because as long as you have your ovaries, um, it's important. Um, and then the copper IUD. As I've said, um, ideally, you want to be using what is natural. You, you, you don't want to be putting foreign substances in your body. But that's why I said, for me, when I make recommendations to women who don't want to go pregnant, and who are not ready to do all of these other things that I have mentioned, what I do recommend for their bone health and their brain health um, and their sanity and not bringing children into this world who they don't want to have because then I'm seeing women coming in wanting termination of pregnancy is to put them on the copper. Uh, copper is a natural uh, substance that we, that we generally use. The reason they put copper on it is because it, it kills the sperms. Um, and yes, the, the substance that you put in is plastic, uh, but it, it, it does not have a hormonal effect. So it is the least harmful of all that we have to offer um, in the medical profession. But if you have heard what I had to say about the most ideal way, which is um, lifestyle and knowing how to use herbs, then absolutely that is the route you would want to take. Um, I'm also mindful and very practical of the fact that I see women. Uh, who end up getting pregnant and then they're requesting termination of pregnancy. Um, and then that has its own complications um, as well. I don't know if you, Brother because if you want me to quickly go through the messages as I'm seeing them and just kind of quickly answer them or... Yeah. Okay, I think yes, please do. Yeah. All right. Um, can contraceptives make you lose interest in having sex? I've already mentioned that, yes. Absolutely, because they can affect your testosterone and they can cause low libido and that this can cause friction uh, within uh, relationships. Um, and um, so most people use contraceptives for skin problems. What's 
the advice um, for those who are using contraceptive for skin control. Um, as I said, it's mostly because of the high testosterone. If, if you, the challenge is people have the power of choice. Um, and a lot of the women, when I talk to them about going on a plant-based um, diet to help regulate um, their hormones and to improve their uh, liver health as a way of clearing up their skin, it is not an option that they want. And we have made the taking of pills is so much easier. You don't have to deny yourself of the junk food and the unhealthy food that, that, that people like to have. Um, so it is very, it is, it is quite easy on, 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 on a plant based diet to help um, your skin be regulated. But otherwise, what people can is also go on a detox pro program. Look, a lot of young people end up being on harmful things like roaccutane. People ask for roaccutane like they're asking for Smarties. And that has, uh, the doctors have to put you, this is, this is a substance that, um, that's used for, for acne. Um, and they have to put you on birth control when you're on it because if you fall pregnant on it, you can affect, um, you can have a malformed baby. They would literally recommend that you terminate if you fall pregnant while you're on it. Yet it is something that you take and it can affect your liver. This is the extremes and women think, okay, I'll just use it until my skin is clear. And then when I come off it, then I'll stop the contraceptives. But when they come off it, because we have not changed what the problem was, then the acne comes back. So we haven't sorted out the problem. So I'm seeing women in their 30s and their 40s asking for a and then having to be on birth control. So it's affecting their liver. It's, now they're at an increased risk of clotting. So we need to realize that the root causes with our lifestyle, with our diet, with our lack of exercise, with the lifestyle that we're living. Um, we are concerned. Uh, okay, I think this has to do with, um, this is a very individualized pro problem. Um, I think if you get my numbers, we can try and have a conversation um, as to how your daughter can be helped. And I have to say this, though. I saw a woman about a week, two weeks ago. Um, she has a condition called endometriosis, where the what's supposed to be in the lining of her womb is actually outside and everywhere else. And her ovaries are just full of endometrium tissue, and they are ready to burst, and they can cause complications, which could lead to death. So for her, my recommendation for her was, look, you need to go and have these ovaries removed because they are not even functioning the way they're supposed to. They're causing her immense pain and they are a risk to her life. And the principle I take from the Bible, Brother Bukosi, is if any part of you troubles you, then it is best. And then for that woman, then we have to see, having had her ovaries removed so early and therefore being denied the progesterone and the oestrogen, what can we then put in place to ensure that we minimize the effects that's going to happen? Because um, you know, now the quality of her life is poor and her life is at risk. Um, if a woman is on birth control for 20 years until they get to menopause, what can they do if their brain and bones are affected already? Uh, I think I've already answered this. Um, we can, it's going to be difficult and challenging, but we can see what we do. But what I'm seeing a lot of um, ladies listening is we like patience. I mean, I had a patient come in just last week. Um, and already they are demanding within two days to see results. That's not how it works. Um, I always say to women, you have to put in at the minimum three months for your cycle to come back into regularity. You cannot expect hormones to have an effect in two days because of what I have described, how the, how the hormonal cycle works. So when we don't have patience to go through the process so that we can see the results, then we end up taking shortcuts and um, then we don't see the long-term results that, that, that we have. So it's going to be challenging, um, but we can see how else we can, we can, we, we can help um, so that one is not losing as much uh, bone um, material. As I said, going on a plant-based diet so that you're not losing your calcium, um, getting, making sure you're on a vitamin D supplement, checking your vitamin D levels, um, those kind of things. I would like to know the effect of birth control with progesterone. That's the injectable ones. 
the biggest one is um, irregular menstrual periods. And some women like this, that they don't bleed. And I say that's not a sign of good health. Um, headaches, breast tenderness, there could be nausea, um, dizziness. You could actually end up with acne as well. It could cause weight gain, abnormal head growth. So um, that's anybody who's on the injectable or something called the mini pill. Um, that's too much. Um, you are just on progesterone and that's going to affect the testosterone as well as the as the oestrogen. Does the IUD have the same effect on hormones as the pill? So there are different kinds of IUDs. There's the copper one, which is non-hormonal, and then there's a hormonal one. And yes, absolutely. I had a woman who came in. She had the Mirena inserted, the hormonal one. She didn't feel well. She got bloated very fast. Um, I had actually had a long conversation with her about it, but she said that's what her gynae had recommended. So she came back after about a week, had it removed, and since then her cycle has not returned to normal. Um, obviously, she already had a hormonal imbalance, and that's why for such a short period it's affected. Uh, women come in and they say, look, I'm," and they come in with their partners, and their partners are like, please take this thing out. She has completely changed because it has an effect on your, on your mental well-being. There'll be women that will tell you that they've been so much better since being on it. Um, and, um, and true, they feel better about themselves because already they had a hormonal imbalance. So it has cleared those other issues. But what is it doing in terms of their cardiovascular system? What is it doing in terms of their bone health? So we always have to look at things uh, holistically so that we're not treating one thing but uh, compromising another. A, a true healing method does not sacrifice one aspect. So make you seem healthy in, in terms of how you feel here, but it's compromising things for, 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 for the future. Um, I have also noticed that a lot of young women um, are having DVTs. Is it because of the pill? Absolutely. And it's because women are taking birth control like it's smarties. They're not even going to their doctors anymore to have their blood pressure checked. Uh, women are smoking and vaping, and that's also causing uh, clotting issues. We're not exercising, um, you know, and there are things that happened in 2020, 2021, 2022 that have affected our bodies. So a lot of women, and, and this is the thing about, about uh, clotting, yeah? You will be fine having dinner, and then the next thing, you have collapsed because the clot went to your lungs, and that's it. That's the end. Um, so it's quite dangerous, and I don't think we tell women about it enough. And because so many women are on contraceptives, we're like, oh, that will never happen to me. Um, what could be the reason for one going on their period um, on the ovulation day? Um, yes, hormonal imbalance, because when you're ovulating, you're not supposed to go on your period. So it means you're not ovulating. You're not supposed to bleed when you're when you're when you're ovulating um, because your oestrogen is high, the follicle has been released, hormonal imbalance. Um, how long approximately after being on the two-month injection would it take for a person to fall pregnant? Does it take longer? Yes. Unfortunately, with the injectables, um, it takes longer than when you're on the pill to return to fertility. Um, the longest I have seen was it took somebody 18 months. It will vary from woman to woman uh, based on um, what, um, what your hormonal balance or imbalance was like before, what your lifestyle is. But having said that, but you can be on a lifestyle and on remedies that help uh, speed up the process. That's why I say we recommend um, you go on a, on, on a program of balancing your hormones um, and commit to it for three um, to six months, but make it a life lifestyle thing. But at least three to six months, if you if you specifically want to be falling pregnant. Besides the natural methods, are the herbs and natural medicines that we can take as means of birth control? Uh, Brother because he mentioned that we will talk about that um, next week. Um, can the use of contraceptives help with uh, shrinking fibroids? And cysts, what better way can help in that regard? As I mentioned about fibroids, um, too much oestrogen. Cysts can also be, depending on the different kind of cysts, there's polycystic ovarian syndrome that's quite different. 
uh, it is just cysts that are fluid filled. Often we see this when there's toxicity. Um, so a good detox program, but also making sure that oestrogen is not the do most dominant uh, hormone. So balancing your hormones literally um, can help. I know um, a gynecologist would use something like a progesterone based pill, uh, maybe to reduce the oestrogen dominance to try and shrink um, the 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 fibroids um but it does not always work and a, and a lot of women end up having operations and um to have the the fibroids removed and there's new methods like embolizations where you block off blood supply to a certain part of the uterus um so is endometriosis caused by hormonal imbalance yes um absolutely it is can the regulation of hormones help in treating the condition? You just have to look, this is not even just our, our message. Um, if you just go and type, uh, can a plant-based diet help with endometriosis? Like I said, the, the patient that I saw who has severe endometriosis, I had to go there with her because it is so severe. Um, and I know that no doctor is going to tell her that. I sent her an article for her to do research there's a there, there's a movement uh, amongst doctors uh, who are studying lifestyle medicine. It's called physicians. Um, uh, it's about physicians' movement for responsible medicine, and they advocate for a plant-based diet for reversal of diabetes and for balancing of of of, of hormones of women. So a plant-based diet, and if you've got endometriosis, I would say absolutely, absolutely go on a plant-based diet because it is terrible having endometriosis. I see all these other conditions, but it is terrible, it is painful, it is, and it can have severe complications, like I said about this woman, because then you have this tissue that can grow in any part of your body. Um, I had someone saying that her neighbor works at this factory and they work with chilies daily and that also men go on their periods for a long time. Can chilies affect the cycle? I am not sure. I don't know about that. I would have to do research. Maybe somebody um, knows um, about that. Um, evening, how can I calculate my ovulation day if my cycle is not 28 days? I have a 23-day um, cycle. Um, well, you could have blood tests done. You could, um, you, you can actually go to a pharmacy and get ovulation sticks um, that can uh, help um, tell you if you are, when you're ovulating. But if you are really regularly having 23 day cycles, so halfway through that cycle, so that's day, what, 11, 12, maybe your, um, your day of ovulation, if, if your, your cycle is quite regular. So if you go to a pharmacy and ask for, 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 for ovulation test kit, um, then you'll have instructions as to how you use it um, to see when it is you are ovulation, ovulating. Um, yo, it seems that they are never ending. I don't know how much time we still have. How can stress affect your hormones? It can because, as I mentioned, cortisol is a stress hormone. So what the brain does is that we need to be dealing with issues of survival and does away with issues of reproduction. So then it can affect your, 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 your hormones, your, your reproductive hormones, your female hormones um, in that sense. Um, all right, I don't know if I should still go on. There are so many. Yeah, I think, I think, I think we'll have to stop here. What I would suggest is that people can just throw their questions on, on, on our WhatsApp group so that at least you can then sort them out and, and, and give a response. Because you have far exceeded our time, I know this is a this is an important topic which I think is very close to many of us. Um, but as I'd say that next week we are going to be having um, a second session which will be trying to maybe come up with strategic plans that one can put in place in order to recondition the body and balance the hormones. Then maybe one can then move to natural ways of preventing pregnancy so we are going to deal with some of those things tomorrow which i think most of the questions are actually looking for those um solutions i think next week we'll be dealing with that and also i want to mention that we are planning to have a, a weekend with uh with your with your doctor yeah there are those that are, are already available for 
such questions. So probably run about April if the Lord permits. We will have that. So look out for that um, camp. It will be just a weekend camp out where you will have a chance to have um, most of your questions answered man to man, face to face. So yeah, I think the post will be out sometime soon, which will give you those indications. But yeah, I think looking at the time, we will need to come to a close. I want to apologize for most of those that had questions that were not answered. I promise that next week we will try and have those questions answered. May you please um, join the group. There is a link of the WhatsApp group there on your messages. They sent a link. Please go to that link and join the group. You can just throw as many questions as you possibly can on our WhatsApp group so that you can then start preparing uh, the answers. So to minimize uh, the time that we spend on, on these discussions. But I see that there's a hand that I actually had pointed. I'm not sure what happened to her. Uh, maybe, maybe, let me just give to Dolphin. That will be the last hand. I apologize for those that we have not um, taken their questions or at least read their questions. We are promising next week we'll be here answering those questions. If you miss the next week, look out for the coming camp. Um, yes, Dolphin? <clears throat> All right, I think it was maybe a mistake. Maybe uh, we can come to a closure of our discussion. There is a link there. I noticed that people are constantly asking for the link. Just scroll up, you will see. And um, it was posted by Sister Naraya Pukunzi. You can just scroll up, you will see the link. Then join the link, you will get all the questions answered on the on the WhatsApp. Yeah. Uh, Doc, I'm not sure if you have closing remarks um the sooner the sooner we make lifestyle changes to allow our hormones to be balanced the sooner we will be benefited uh and not just us uh those around us remember the young lady i spoke about she said she made wrong friendships she made wrong decisions about where to stay and her relationship with her husband was uh, not so great because and she was just on the injectable for two months so these things affect us in ways that we could never imagine it's called the law of unintended consequences so it's important that we educate ourselves and this is what this platform seeks to do if you still choose um you know to go on the contraceptive you just need to know um what the cost is and it should be a cost that you're willing to pay that's all we're saying um and i pray that the lord may grant us wisdom and may grant us strength to make the best decision for ourselves amen thank you very much there is the link once again maybe let me ask a question as we are closing if i were to send you an email then i tell you that the email that i've just sent you has a virus how many of you are going to open that email? I suppose none of you will open that email. So now the question that I will ask again is that, why would we constantly put in our bodies things that we know that they are harmful to us? That's the question that I would want to leave you with. But the, what is important is to understand that God says you are wonderfully and fearfully made. And when he was creating us, he had a plan for all those things. You know. When you read, you'll notice that God actually encourages us to have a plan for the family. It was not his plan that we constantly reproduce and have children that we cannot care for. If he had a plan for a family, it means that he had a plan on how to manage and control the family. If we can move towards God's plan, we will see things will work better. You know, sometimes as human beings, it's very difficult to make right decision. But one thing that God has given men, which is our power, this is our strength, it is the power of choice make a decision understand that life is a, is an event of choice and consequences whatever decision that you make you must be prepared to suffer the consequences thereafter but i want to thank the lord that for us in this platform we are getting an opportunity to hear another voice which then gives us an opportunity to choose 
because we have options. So now that God has given us options, let's go back and study more and research more and make up our mind as to what do we want to do with our bodies. Having said that, I would ask that O Brother Mpo may close in prayer for us. And in your prayer, please do pray for those that have um, suffered the consequences of these uh, medications. I know most of us, we use these medications not because, um, just because we did not know the best or the better way of dealing with them. So people have had injuries because of these medications. Maybe you can just pray also for, the, for those individuals that the Lord may help to recover the bodies. Thank you very much. May we close our eyes as Upadam Paul prays. Our gracious Father in heaven, before your throne of mercy, we humble ourselves. Thankful for the opportunity that you have granted us today for providing this education or this information. <clears throat> it is never too late. Uh, neither was it too early, but it came just on time for everyone. I know many here might be sitting with regret um, about decisions that had been made in the absence of information. Uh, yet it's your mercy that has kept each and every one of us until this day in which we learn so that you may redeem our situation in whatever degree or whatever point of life we may find ourselves regarding the subject of this evening. We give thanks for this maid servant that we used tonight to share this um, light and information with us. We pray for the gift of um, memory that we may not forget what we learned today. We also pray for strength to make decisions that we may not be ever learning, but never coming to the understanding of truth, which is the practice of it, so that these sessions that we have may not be fruitless in our lives. Lord, in a special way, a request has been made for those who have been affected by the decision um, to use birth control. Of course, that decision taken in ignorance unwillful and others willful. Um, we pray for your mercy and your grace to come upon us. And it is very important that as we pray, we remember that we also have a part to play. That if we do not conform to the counsels that we've received about becoming healthier, about taking care of our physical bodies, we may not reverse all damage, but Lord Jesus, you are able to work with us at whatever phase we are in. You are able to restore and redeem. You are able to bless, save. For you say that whatever was done in the time of ignorance, you will. And we are thankful that we have a healer like none other, a physician that has never lost a case, one who is not ignorant to the infirmities of our frame, who knows exactly what it creates, what he created, he does not need to guess, he does not need to test, he does not need to, any, to do anything because you know it. And as we come closer to your revealed will, you also, Lord Jesus, bless us as we do our best to do what is possible with humanity, then you will do that which can only be done by divinity. We pray for every individual that is here, that you may bless them in their home with their unique needs. You may shelter them and protect them. And you may give them the boldness and the strength to do something about what they've learned. Be with Lit Impact and its personnel and the team. And may you continue blessing them and um, giving them strength to continue sharing uh, on this platform, educating people, and um, helping as many as they possibly can. We thank you for everything. In the precious and loving name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> if you would want, if you're in Jobek, I think Doc is not far from you. You can always set an appointment and visit her at her surgery. I think she can just send the contacts for those that would want to go and consult. At a practice, you I think you'll find that very much helpful and beneficial. 
those that are in Jopek and those that would want to communicate with Heshi had said that it's better to use WhatsApp because of the busy schedule. Um, so at least you have available help whenever you need it. Please do make, us, make, make use of it, but be mindful of the other engagements that they are, they are, they are having. Above that, may the Lord bless you and keep you till we meet again, same place, same time, next week. God bless you. Love you all. Because Yes. Hi there.